you can edit out all the like pauses. And <laughs> <laughs> can you keep all the pauses? In? <laughs> yeah. Pull up, two subs in the back, playing on them old school tracks. When I pull up, no, you already heard. You ain't gotta say another word. When I pull up, when I pull up, they notice. Welcome to episode three of Small Talk. It's a video podcast where we talk to people in and around the Vancouver industry that we think are super interesting. And I'm fortunate to have probably one of my biggest nerd crushes locally in Vancouver, Dr. Angelica Lim. Woo! I'm clapping for you. <laughs> Can we put in like a little soundtrack there? That's a little applause. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here? Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, yeah. Stacey. Uh, so right now I'm an assistant professor of professional practice. That's my title up at Simon Fraser University um, in computing science. And specifically, I do research in artificial intelligence and robotics to make robots more emotionally intelligent. I can't wait to get into that. Yeah. Like, I cannot wait to start talking about all of those things because I've watched Westworld. So, <laughs> me too. It was, it was really interesting to be like, oh, I, I know what all of those jobs are for. Like, uh, you know, I used to work at a robotics company. Yep. And we had different floors for all those different teams. Oh, that's I mean, crazy. So maybe you can share a little bit about how you got started and like what actually brought you into the field that you're in now. So my mom, I found out when I was maybe 16 years old, was actually a programmer. I didn't know this throughout my entire life. I was just like, well, you know, derpy professor. She was just a derpy mom, right? <laughs> yeah. And so um, I didn't know what she did, but we had all these computers around the house and I would play video games. Um, and so one day we had to do something for our career prep class, which was interview someone and ask them about their job. And I was like, mom, I have this thing to do tomorrow. Can I just interview you? Just I just need to ask you some questions. And I'm like, oh, is that what you do? Oh, wow. What's a, you know, what's a programmer? And how much do you get paid? Okay, like I did on my checklist, and I'm like, wow, this sounds like a really cool job. And so I ended up applying to CompSci at um, Simon Fraser University back in the day. You start in CompSci. Yes. So you're getting all your, your foundations and stuff there. But now, you, like, to hear you talk about um, AI and AI specifically in terms of robotics, uh, you know, um, effective computing, that, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, how did you end up? Like, how did you end up there? Yeah, so that was also a real, um, it was really by chance. So I went abroad because I, I, I liked the French language in high school, so I decided to go away to France for a year. Um, and there, they actually, in, as part of the curriculum, they have the students pair up with professors to do a project. So I happened to get paired up with a professor that was doing a robotics project, an underwater robotics project. And so I had no idea what this was about, but we got to go to the beach. We yeah. got to, and so I'm like, this is a cool job. Um, and, you know, we had this huge team all trying to make this robot. So I'm like, this, you know, it's nice to have this family all building this one thing. Um, and many pizzas later, we entered this robot into competition and we didn't win, but it was still really fun to go see our robot swimming off into the, to the distance. So yeah. I think that's where I started to fall in love with robots. We're, we're building things that are useful, AI that's useful today, but not necessarily the um, Westworld stuff. Oh, right. except for, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on the, the emotion part, which yeah. is uh, a, kind of the deeper stuff that underlies things like consciousness, and um, it's just fascinating to me. I think right now, uh, in this field of recognizing emotions, maybe you've heard of these softwares that can just like look at your face and say if you're happy or sad. And the reality is that we really don't make the same face. Like the prototypical faces that psychology has told us are happy and sad, they don't come up in real life. So like the, that can actually be like this wonderful hot chocolate in my, in my mm. cup. It's like, mmm, like that can mean a totally different thing, right? So context is something that computers don't really understand and all of that complexity is what makes um, this emotional intelligence is piece hard. Lightning round questions. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, what's your uh, what's your favorite current song? My favorite current song. Um, I'm in a, a R and B choir, and right now we're doing um, uh, 
TLC's Waterfall. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know it's not like current favorite song. It's just, you know, it's come back. If you went home tonight and you got into your comfy pants and you put on the Netflix mm-hmm. uh, and all of a sudden it's the story of your life, what would it be titled? Oh. I know. It's really hard, isn't it? Oh, that is a hard one. Um, it would be, I don't know. Like the derpy professor or something like that, because I feel like that's my life. The derpy professor. <laughs> uh, when I walk, <laughs> when people find out that I am a professor, they're like, "What?" Because <laughs> they just know me as just this kind of goofy person who just likes to eat and you know roll around and sing. What do you think has been your number one life hack that you'd be like, "Oh, I figure this out." And I need I to share tell it. everybody about this. So when I was in, I lived in France for like three years. And so, as a Canadian abroad, I needed my poutine, but they didn't have cheese curds there, so that just wasn't easy to get. Um, and so, what I found out was Baby Bell. Oh. Some people may hate me for this, but when you're desperate, Baby Bell cut into chunks with some gravy on top on fries. I see where you're going. It's quite good. Yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good hack. Yes. You need that when you're abroad. You do. Because they really don't even know what poutine is. You gotta get your poutine. Yeah. And <laughs> People think robots, they have a, a vision in their head, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but you earlier brought up a really great point about like, they're all around us doing things for us all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, what are like when you give those examples? What are two or three examples that you give to people that you'd be like, "Hey, this is a robot. It's just, it's not your like, hey, like Jetsons robot that you expect to see, or you know, the movies, you know." One that's coming up these days are autonomous cars. So yeah. that's a that's a robot. I mean, Knight Rider. These are yeah. these are robots because they're sensing the world. They're acting upon them, and they're also useful to us. Um, Have you driven in a Tesla? I have driven it in a Tesla, but not have they, the auto park. So they do the auto park, and it's so creepy because they'll, like, my friend did it. She's like, okay, and we're trying to, like, have trust. Yeah. And it goes, and it's like, and it's, like, perfecting. Oh, so wow. it's really interesting because mm-hmm. there's certain conditions that you can be like, oh, that's an edge case. That's an edge case. That's an edge case. Yeah. So it's really interesting how it kind of like um, reveals that in itself in some ways. Mm-hmm. And also really freaky to be like, oh, we're just going to trust that this is going to do the right thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the issues right now with robotics is trust. So, yeah. uh, I mean, elevators. That's also kind of somewhat like you're putting your trust into this machine that's moving you around. Yeah. So maybe it's not a full robot, like it, but it still has sensors and actuators. Mm-hmm. Um, and... The, the elevators here are interesting because there aren't any buttons inside. So you just get in and you're like, well, hope it takes me to the right floor that I programmed <laughs> it to bring me to. Well, you worked on Pepper, right? I did. So I worked on Pepper, this humanoid robot, like this tall for about four years. And what's interesting is when you have this humanoid form, you can go anywhere humans live and work, right? So we have, mm-hmm. we, when I worked there, we would put the robot into hospitals, into hotels, into to be answering all these questions that, you know, that the employees are just tired of answering, for example. And so, so I like that because of this humanoid form. You're talking to a being, you're not, you know, touching a screen, you're going back to actually using our human communication forms yeah. instead of like typing into, you know, Google search to figure out what your answer is. So Yeah. You know, in the community, it's, it's interesting because you also run a lot of programs that really benefit um, AI all up and getting people in, interested in AI specifically, you know, grade 11 uh, women who are trying to think about if they're going to consider that a career. Um, can you share a little bit about what that program is and like yeah. and your goals with it? One of the things that I've been working on is a, a partnership with AI for All, which is a nonprofit in the States, uh, where we put together this education program for grade 11 girls to come up to Simon Fraser University and we teach them these very tough concepts, stuff that's like graduate level artificial intelligence work um, for two weeks and then they come out with it like being able to not just talk the talk with artificial intelligence but even code up um, the algorithms that we teach them. Yeah I mean that's pretty crazy when you think about it like you're going to a camp you're going to make new friends who might be your colleagues network for life um, and you have these skills skills that like you know uh, probably 10-year engineers are 
having to gain or you yeah. know learning to level up like what an opportunity but that's I, kind of why also I went back to teaching so I worked as a software engineer and then a software engineer an engineering manager at this robotics company but then I was like how can I make an impact for the for the future, right? Um, yeah. And I realized that, well, maybe going back and teaching, I have a teaching a class of 400 students this semester, um, intro to computing science, but through an AI lens. So yeah. even okay. outside of this summer camp, just trying to have them realize that there's all these algorithms all around us. Our Netflix is recommending stuff based on these algorithms and artificial ar artificial intelligence algorithms. I'm always super happy to be working with the students up at SFU. I have some grad students and undergrads working with my robots um, to kind of help improve their emotional intelligence. So one of the things that we're doing is uh, empathy. So we take videos of people speaking mm -hmm. and we try to see how people react, right? So let's say I'm talking about some sad story and then there's some sort of reaction from the other person. How can we make a robot that would react in a similar way to a human? So if you know about the Turing test, this is supposed to be kind of the chat bot version of if you're chatting with um, some kind of computer, if the computer can fool you into thinking it's actually a human typing back to you, then it, this passes the Turing test. This is kind of the new idea I'd like to explore in the next few years is what is a robotic response that where you're not even sure is it somebody that's like teleoperating the robot or if is it is it just doing that um, because the algorithm is that good so yeah getting to the level where um, it's really natural is is pretty exciting so I'm working on that silly silly baby steps thank you so much for spending some oh. time with us and having some small talk thanks for having me yeah it was a pleasure um, and that's another episode of Small Talk. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in the next month when we have another new interesting guest.